Good news, everybody. The May unemployment figures have come out, and there's been an increase in jobs in the United States of about 2.5 million. It's wonderful news, except for the fact that nobody believes it. Okay, so how do you have an opinion about numbers? Well, this number just doesn't make sense. Oh, but the last month's number did make sense. It was 17-ish million were lost. Why did that make sense? One of the things I've been trying to say throughout all of my videos is that you have to look at things in the long term and you have to use a lot of interpretation, a lot of careful thought about everything and really look at your data sources, really understand what it is that these numbers are describing. The problem with the official Bureau of Labor Statistics numbers, which came out just today, uh, June 5th, is that, well, it showed a 2.5 million increase in the total number of jobs in the country. A few days ago, the ADP unemployment rate came out, that I often refer to, and it showed a net decrease of 2.7 million jobs. Now, that's a huge difference. That's over... 5 million, which is to say 2.5% of the labor force, about 200 million people. And the two of them didn't really agree the previous month. So we do have some alternative sources of information, and they're all over the place. I mean, is the government lying to us? Is this a, a great big conspiracy to hide the true unemployment? Uh, no, it really isn't. But let's get with the numbers. The two things I suggested to watch were U6 unemployment, which, let me make sure I get this right, fell from 22.8% to 21.4%. It's a pretty substantial drop. One and a half percent, that's, you know, three million people. Not bad. Um, the other thing I suggested to watch was the ADP unemployment report. And as I said, this is a very different number. In fact, if you look at the total number of jobs lost since the beginning of the virus pandemic, the Bureau of Labor Statistics official numbers are about 15.4 million lost versus the uh, ADP unemployment report, which has about 23 million. The difference is about 8 million people or about 4% of the workforce. It's not a small number. Okay. Which is the right answer? Well, almost everybody favors the official number because it's official. It comes from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and it is done by a combination of two surveys. There's the household survey of uh, up to 60,000 people that they do on a constant rotating basis. Basically, you know, call them up, how you do it? Plus an establishment survey, which is about 3,500 employers. Hey, how you do it? Hired anybody? Fired anybody? How's it going? And they combine these two. And basically, of the population of 200 million in this mythical uh, labor force, uh, you have a very, two, a very big number from this month and a very big number from last month, and you subtract the two and get a relatively small number, although the difference has been quite large lately. Uh, ADP, on the other hand, handles over 10% of the payroll of the United States. Last I heard them bragging, it was over 11%, but whatever. Uh, they handle about 20 million, 22 million of the payroll. So they have this huge body of data that they can see trends and all that, and they can extrapolate, and they can use all kinds of statistical methods to really analyze things. Their total figure was 20 million loss in April versus and 2.7 in May for a total of about 23 million rule. Okay. Um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics was 17.9 uh, in April and a net gain of 2.5 in May. All right. So which, which is better? Well, I favor the ADP report uh, for several reasons. One is, is that the pool is much larger. Um, and second of all, it's, they have some uh, ability to run more comprehensive statistics. But most importantly, if you look at the two, they eventually come into line with each other. But the ADP report is much more even over the months. It, it, it will st show steady increases or steady decreases. In fact, this one showed a huge spike and then a, sh a small 
additional 10% uh, or so, 2.7 million. It seems right. Now that's my bias. It seems right. Hello. Um, the BLS number, I mean, you know, is it a great conspiracy? Is the government lying to us? Well, they've been using the same methods since 1948. And people love that consistency of data. They've tweaked it a little bit here and there, of course, with modern statistics, but well, it, there's noise in it. We know that for a fact. I mean, it's the official number, it's what we have to go by. But if you look at the reports on this tremendous gain in May, pretty much everybody says, yeah, that's going to be revised away. And they do revise this in subsequent months as they get more information from the, the surveys that they conduct. So what, do, what can we really say about it? I mean, what, what could possibly have gone wrong? The issue at hand is, is that when we're looking at big data, everybody looks at trends. We know that there was a substantial change in April. So all of the old data, do you just throw it out? No, you need that to look at how the changes are going. Yes, but we know that there was a substantial change, something on the order of 10% of the workforce. Wow. So what do you do with it? Now, I tend to believe the ADP report. I always have. It's just less noisy. It's based on a bigger data set and more modern methods. The official numbers, well, nobody seems to really believe, but they don't really talk about the ADP number. Which is the actual case? It's impossible to tell right away. And here's the thing. If you believe that an economy should be run by, you know, people at the top, making decisions on, you know, money to print, whatever, any kind of centralized thing, you need to believe that there is a possibility that we can collect really good real-time data. And we cannot, especially not in a time of a great big spike. There's always some noise in it. There's always some difficulty. All right. The second issue at hand is that if you want to look for some kind of great conspiracy or whatever, you can always find evidence for it. But it's simply that things are flawed, that this is not a precise science. My contention is always that you must look at the long term, you must look at long term trends, and that if you follow this stuff on a monthly basis, you'll go blind. I mean, trust me, my vision's not what it used to be. There is no great conspiracy. It's not that the Bureau of Labor Statistics is fudging the data. It's that their methods are imperfect. And we have other methods that show a different number that, eh, frankly, makes more sense. Makes more sense based on experience. Yeah, whatever. I know. Nobody likes it. Just keep calm, carry on. We'll get through this. For now, what's the May unemployment number? We'll see how it gets revised, okay? I still like the ADP number. About 23 million Americans have lost their jobs since the virus began, which is, you know, a solid 12% of the workforce. Okay, we'll see you.